experience. In this video, we will discover how to create a successful work experience section of your portfolio. We will discuss which experience to include and how to describe your work in an effective way. Now, the age-old question when it comes to portfolios and resumes is, do you put work experience before education or vice versa? This all depends on the job to which you are hoping to apply. The relevance to potential jobs or job postings plays the most important role in how to lay out your portfolio. You want to list your most relevant experience first. So, if you think your degree is more relevant than your last job or volunteer position, then you should include your education first. If you think your recent work experience is more applicable to your field or is significantly more recent, then this should be the priority. Your experience should be listed in a relatively similar manner to your education, as you want your formatting to stay pretty consistent throughout your portfolio, in that you should list your job title, the company name and location, and the dates you were employed. In this section, you should also include a brief overview of your achievements and responsibilities during your time in that position, all in reverse chronological order. Try to keep the work experience section under three to five jobs. You want to try to tailor your past work experience to the job you are hoping to achieve. Only include your jobs that are the most relevant to your field. If none of your previous or current positions had anything to do with the industry you're hoping to enter, search for elements in your work that can be applicable to the position you are applying for. This can be a good chance to feature some of the soft skills you possess. Once you have narrowed down the jobs you will be including in your portfolio, you need to decide how best to describe your achievements and responsibilities to any readers. When possible, you should always list accomplishments over responsibilities, as any potential employer would rather know what you did to make a change in your time at an organization than know what your responsibilities were at the job. For example, instead of just saying that you carried out sales operations, you could list more specifically that you hit and exceeded monthly sales targets for three months in a row, or that you were granted employee of the month on multiple occasions. They're looking for information and any kind of notable achievements that you could also apply to their company. If you have no paid work experience to speak of, you can focus more on your soft skills, achievements in college or university, and other personal qualities. Most likely, if you are a recent graduate or still in school, recruiters will not expect you to have a whole page worth of work experience. Instead, you might consider including internships or co-ops, volunteer experiences, school projects with applicable takeaways, or even personal projects like a YouTube channel or an Etsy store. Format these positions and experiences the same way you would a paid work experience. Remember that even though the work experience section is arguably one of the most important, your actual experience doesn't matter as much as what you can take from it. If you are able to tailor it to the job you are searching for and list any noteworthy achievements, it will help you stand out. In the next video, we will learn how to provide constructive evidence of your skills through projects or work examples section.